Senator Friends. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and the Sergeant at Arms be instructed to bring in the absent members. On that motion, any discussion? All in favor say aye. All opposed say no. The motion prevails. Members, if you'd be so kind as to stand. Today's chaplain is Reverend Dr. Ken Beal, who is a retired Army chaplain from Fort Snelling Memorial Chapel. And members, following the prayer, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mindful that we Americans claim to be a nation under God and put our trust in God, let us unite together in prayer, not because it's customary for us to do so, but because it's necessary. Lord, even as we are gathered in this Senate chamber, weighed down by the issues of our state, nation, and world, convict us of our share of personal responsibility for the situation in which we find ourselves. May we confess our part in creating our dilemmas, lest we feel no obligation to solve them. May we tolerate nothing in our personal living, which, if multiplied, would weaken our beloved republic. And when we feel discouraged and feel most helpless, may we turn to you for the answers that you have for every piece of legislature before us. Enable us to see issues clearly before crisis clouds them, and help us to choose the righteous course of action, less relying upon our own understanding we must choose between lesser evils. Lord, as grateful citizens, we would be remiss if we did not pause to give thanks for our many soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, some of whom are gathered in this capital rotunda on this Veterans Day on the Hill. May this 1% of our citizenry called Armed Forces Service members who put their lives in harm's way for the remaining 99% of their fellow Americans know us to be a grateful people. For we ask this of our Father's God to thee, who shed his grace on America and is the author of our liberty and the sole source of our inalienable rights. Amen. Thank you, members. The secretary will take the roll. Abler, Anderson, Barr, Bolden, Carlson, Champion, Coleman, Swadzinski, Dames, Dibble, Dornick, Dreheim, Draskowski, Duckworth, Diedzik, Eichhorn, Farnsworth, Fateh, Frentz, Green, Grunhagen, Gustafson, Hoschild, Herr, Hoffman, Housley, Howe, Jasinski, Johnson, Klein, Coran, Kroon, Kunish, Kupek, Lang, Latz, Liskey, Limmer, Lucero, Mann, Marty, Matthews, May Quaid, McEwen, Miller, Mitchell, Mohammed, Morrison, Murphy, Nelson, Umover, Baton, Pappas, Pa, Port, Pratt, Putnam, Rarick, Rasmussen, Rest, Seeberger, Utke, Weber, Wiesenberg, Westland, Westrom, Wickland, Zhang. Thank you. Pursuant to Rule 14.1, the following members intend to vote under Rule 40.7. Dizik and Westrom. Members, a quorum is present. <laughs> members, if you care to follow along, I am going through the Senate agenda, dated Thursday, March 30th, 2023. We will begin at the third order of business. Messages from the House. The Secretary will read the message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House of the following House files herewith transmitted. House file numbers 375, 581, 
1327, 1355, and 1523. Signed, Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Members, no action is required. We will now proceed to the fourth order of business, first reading of House bills. The House files have been given their first reading and referred as indicated. Members, we will now proceed to the fifth order of business, report of committees. Members, there is one report to be read. Senator Morrison for the motion to adopt committee reports after the secretary reports and reads the motion. Senator Marty from the Committee on Finance, to which was re-referred House File Number 19, a bill for an act relating to employment, providing for earned sick and safe time, adding a district court judge to the 9th Judicial District. Reports the same back with the recommendation that House File Number 19, the first unofficial engrossment, be amended as follows. And when so amended, the bill do pass. Thank you for reading the committee report. Now, Senator Morrison for a motion to adopt the committee reports. Mr. President, I move the committee reports printed in the agenda and the report read by the secretary be adopted, and I do request a roll call. Roll call requested, a roll call granted. Any discussion? Seeing none, the secretary will take the roll. Members, please vote. Senator Murphy, for those voting under Rule 40.7? I think not. A Senator Bowden, for those voting under Rule 40.7? Thank you, Mr. President. I report that Senator Dietzik votes aye. Senator Dizik votes aye. Members, please vote. Mr. President. Senator Zizinski, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Western votes aye. Senator Western votes aye. All senators having voted who desires to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There have been 42 ayes and 20 noes. The motion uh, prevails. <laughs> Members, we will now move to the sixth order of business, second reading of Senate bills. The, second, the secretary will read the Senate file numbers. Senate file numbers 1819, 1824, 2114, and 2042. The Senate files have been given their second reading. <laughs> Members, we will now proceed to the seventh order of business, second reading of House bills. The Secretary will read the House file numbers. House file numbers 1656 and 19. The House files have been given their second reading. Members, we will now proceed to the eighth order of business, which is the introduction of, of first reading of Senate bills. The bills listed on today's introduction calendar are given their first reading and referred as indicated. <laughs> Members, we will now proceed to the ninth order of business, motions and resolutions. We will adopt the author's motion as one motion. All in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. <laughs> Senate resolution number 30 will be referred to the Committee on Rules and Administration. We will now move and remain in the same space. The Secretary will report Senate concurrent resolution number four. Senators Dedzik, Johnson, and Morrison introduced Senate concurrent resolution number four, a Senate concurrent resolution relating to adjournment for more than three days. Senator Morrison, Senator Morrison. 
Uh, Mr. President, are we doing the concurrent resolution? We are, Senator Morrison. <laughs> Mr. President, I move Senate concurrent resolution number four be adopted. To the resolution, Senator Morrison. Uh, Mr. President, we need to pass this to accommodate the uh, legislative break next week where we will not meet for three days. Thank you, Senator Morrison. Seeing no, uh, any discussion? Seeing no further discussion, all in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Remaining under the order of business of motions and resolutions, Senator Morrison to designate special orders. Mr. President, pursuant to Rule 26, I designate the following bill be made a special order for immediate consideration. And members, the special orders list is on your desk. We will now take up Senate file number 1213. Senator Umuver Baden. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate file 1213 is really a simple administrative change to how the Min-State system classifies its employees. And I just want to note up front that this bill um, represents an agreed upon change between the administration, uh, the faculty unions of Min-State colleges and universities as well. So er, uh, under our current statute, faculty that teach uh, courses only under the summer months do not qualify for union representation, and this bill just fixes that. It expands union representation to Min-State faculty um, that only teach courses during the summer. And when the uh, Public Employee Labor Relations Act was first passed in 1974, the summer courses were sort of rare. Um, now there's a lot more folks that are teaching in the summer, and it's primarily adjunct faculty that are going to be eligible for this union representation. So this change ensures that uh, those summer faculty receive the same benefits and protections. Those are things like guaranteed minimum pay, tuition uh, waivers, paid leave, professional development. And the bill does that simply by expanding the definition of the threshold from the academic year to the calendar year. The bill also maintains the existing minimum threshold required to qualify for union representation. So once a faculty member teaches more than three credits or two or more classes in a calendar year, they're then included in the bargaining unit um, determined by uh, the uh, Public Employee uh, Relations Act. It doesn't require anyone to join the union. It just requires that the bargaining units uh, represent all faculty who meet this criteria. And according to Min State, this change will impact uh, roughly 84 faculty members across two, par uh, two bargaining units. There's no fiscal impact, and the faculty already received the minimum pay uh, set forth in the, in the union contract. So it's really the inclusion of the other benefits, um, small number of imp impacted faculty. Um, and because of that, they don't expect that there's going to be any additional cost for Min State. So again, Min State agrees to this. The bargaining units, um, I think this is long overdue and just ensures that those folks have union representation. Uh, I do have a small technical amendment that I'd like to bring forward, the A2 amendment. Senator Umu Verbaden offers the A2 amendment. The secretary will report the amendment. Senator Umover Maiden moves to amend Senate file number 1213 as follows. Page 3, line 10, after more, insert credit bearing. This is the A2 amendment. Senator Umover Maiden, to your A2 amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. So this amendment just adds the word credit bearing to uh, the language to really ensure that the scope of the definition is narrow and um, expands this representation to those summer only faculty. And it was requested by the Min-State system. It also includes an immediate effective date uh, so that the bargaining units can begin representing folks uh, this summer, 2023. Any other discussions to the A2 amendment? Um, a roll call requested. Roll call. Did you request a roll call on A2, Senator Umu Verbaden? Yes, Mr. President. Roll call uh, requested. Roll call granted. Uh, Senator Duckworth. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just have one simple question uh, for the bill's author, if she would yield. Senator Umu Verbaden will yield. Senator Duckworth. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Umu Verbaden. Um, just curious, uh, first off, you answered several questions that I did have, so thank you for that. Um, but regarding the potential cost to the state or a fiscal impact, I'm just curious, 
uh, do you foresee or will this have any impact regarding some of the pension funds as it relates to these folks um, if their uh, ability to join the union is expanded? Thank you. To the question, Senator Umuver Vaden. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Duckworth, for the question. Again, the bill um, does not have a fiscal impact, and Min State and the bargaining units work together on this. They don't anticipate any additional costs. Uh, Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Would Senator Umuver Baton please uh, yield for a question? She will yield. Senator Pratt. Thank you. Uh, Senator, uh, just a, a quick clarifying question. While I understand your, the, the claim that there's no fiscal cost, uh, are these employees currently or will they now be eligible for uh, state pensions? Senator Umu Verbaten, to the question. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Pratt, for the question. Um, so again, these faculty are teaching uh, classes during the summer. Um, when they're eligible for that union representation, that could include uh, receiving the same benefits and protections, but it is the estimate of um, Min State that there wouldn't be much of an impact because this is under the uh, Public Employee Relations Act. I believe that you know they're public employees and then would receive public pensions. I, I don't have the exact um, statute that that would fall under. Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. Would the good senator yield for another question? Senator Umu Ver Ver Verbaten will yield for another question. Senator Pratt. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Senator Wood, uh, so once these employees become public employees and are now eligible for the pension, will they be starting uh, and contributing now or will they be given credit for past service? Senator Umu Verbaten, to the question. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, um, uh, Senator Pratt, for the question. Um, I am um, just verifying some of that information with the, the bargaining units, and it's their understanding that because this is impacting um, roughly 84 faculty, um, that might be too, f that's too few to be added to the pensions. So um, that, sh that shouldn't be the case. Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. Would Senator French yield for a question? Senator French, will you yield? He will yield. Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator, as chair of the Pensions Committee, I just wanted to verify with you uh, that there will be no impact uh, to the pension that the state will have to make up on account of these employees being having their classification um, or, or being reclassified. Senator French, to the question. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Pratt. I'm glad to report. I think that is a good question, although it's Chair Kali Hur from the House who's actually chairing our Pension Commission for us. Uh, the inter, uh, interfaculty organization informs me that on both sides this was unanimously agreed to and that the pension impact is not one that the plan directors have expressed any concern about, so passed unanimously, and that's my understanding of its impact on pensions. Therefore, full support for Senator Umar Verbeaton's bill not just the pension aspect, but everything she's trying to accomplish. Thank you, Senator Pratt. Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and Senator Friends, thanks for the cor correction. Not that I'm trying to uh, uh, disrespect our, our uh, colleague in the other body, but I always assume the Senate's in charge. Any additional questions? Senator, uh, or discussion? Senator Pappas. Um, Thank you, Mr. President. Just to follow up, it's, it's like Senator Press, it's like an IRAP, an IRA, that they would be eligible for a defined contribution plan. So it's just their own money that would be invested. And uh, Mr. Senator President, I have a question for Senator Umu Verbaten. I just want to clarify, because this came up earlier, um, you mentioned that it was adjunct faculty that just works in the summer. But I think, according to my information, it's any adjunct faculty. If you, if you do a class in the fall or the spring, you still would be eligible to be included in the bargaining unit. So I just want to make sure that that's correct and that we clarify that. Thank you. Senator Verbaden, will you yield for a question? She will yield for a question. Senator Verbaden. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yes, that's correct. Senator Klein. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And the question before the body right now is the A2 amendment. We seem to be debating the underlying bill. I would like to request a roll call on the A2 amendment. Roll call. Re requested roll call granted. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the secretary will take the roll on the A2 amendment.
Members, please vote. Senator Bowden, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. I report that Senator Dietzik votes aye. Senator Dietzik votes aye. Senator Jasinski, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Western votes no. Senator Western votes no. All senators having voted who desires to vote, the secretary will close the roll. With 52 ayes and 12 noes, the amendment is adopted. Third reading. Oh. Third reading. Senate file number 1213, a bill for an act relating to labor, modifying certain exclusions to the definition of public employee. Third reading. Any discussion? Senator Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Would the author yield for a question? Uh, Senator Verbatim, she will yield for, for, for a question. Uh, Senator Jaskowski. Thank you, um, Mr. President. Senator Umo Verbatim, um, does uh, do the people who are members of the union currently receive any different compensation than these 84 members that you're attempting to add into the union? Senator Umu Verbaden, to the question. Thank you, Mr. President, um, and Senator Draskowski for the question. So the affected faculty are already receiving the minimum pay set forth in the contracts, but um, because they're not eligible for the uh, full union representation, there are other things like tuition waivers and paid leave and professional development that they would have access to. Cinder Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, well, um, Senator Umo Verbaden, I, I don't know what the uh, advantage would be to the individual in the union. It sounds like maybe they could go to some training or something, um, but obviously we are seeing a series of bills, Mr. President and Senator Uma Verbaten, that uh, the majority is bringing through to strengthen unions in Minnesota, to add more members to them, to reduce reporting, to reduce um, uh, confirmation of contracts by the Minnesota legislature and other things, and this is still yet one more in that. Uh, I'd have another question, Mr. President, for the author, if she would yield again. Senator Umu Verbaden will yield for a question. Senator Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Umu Verbaden, what does, uh, within the IFO organization, if I am a member, one of, if I'm one of those 84 union members or, or potential union members under this bill. Can you walk through for us how they would become members and upon becoming members, how they would opt out? Senator Umu Verbaten, to the question. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Draskowski, for the question. Again, this bill is not requiring anyone to join the union. It's just um, letting them be eligible. So through the, the same regular process of collective bargaining. They could decide to become members of the union or they could decide not to, but this, this bill does not change that. It does not require anyone to join a union. Senator Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Would do the author yield again, Mr. President? Senator Umu Verbaden will yield for questions. Senator Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, Senator, can you tell us, so if I am um, one of these adjunct professors at a Minnesota State College, and I want to join the IFO union after your bill passes, how do I do that? And then after I become a member, how do I undo that? Senator Umu Verbaden, to the question. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Draskowski. To join the union, you would sign the card. Um, that's how you join. Senator Draskowski. Would she yield one more time, Mr. President? Will you yield for another question? Senator Umu Verbaden will yield for another question. Senator Draskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Umu Verbaden. So, so they would fill out a card and join the union. How would they unsubscribe from the union? We have this Supreme Court decision called Janus. Um, and some of these unions, Senator, have developed very difficult approaches for individuals to unsubscribe. Uh, can you tell us how, it hand, how it's handled within the IFO union? Senator Umu Verbaden to the question. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you would submit a written letter, and there is a drop period to do so. It, I believe it's from April 1st to June 15th. S Senator Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. I think I, I think I heard, I couldn't hear real well, Mr. President, but I think I heard um, May 1st through June 13th or something like that. Um, so members, thank you, um, Senator Uma Verbaten. So members, there is a hoop that's being put together by these unions making it difficult for people to jump out of them. Uh, I don't see a lot of uh, benefit to this. Certainly uh, the contributions uh, by unions to Democrats and their political uh, organizations, Mr. President, is very well documented. Uh, and this is yet uh, another pile of originally taxpayer money that will then be taken uh, from the hardworking Minnesotans among this 84 uh, member, potential membership uh, class that's being added in here, and um, then become political contributions for the Democrats, Mr. President. Um, that's really uh, the main reason that I'm against this bill. Um, I'm wondering, uh, I, one more question for the author if she'd yield, Mr. President. Senator Umu Verbaden will yield for another question. Senator Draskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Umu Verbaden, are there any faculty left that don't have an opportunity to join the union after your bill, or is, does this fully capture all of the union member or all of the faculty within the IFO union. Senator Umu Verbaden to the question. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Draskowski, for the question again. This bill does not require anyone to join the union. So it just it allows folks to be eligible um, for union representation. No one is required to do so. Senator Draskowski to Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I didn't get the answer to my question, Mr. President, but I, it, it appears from the bill that, uh, that we have found all of the instructors and all of the people who could potentially join this union in the bill, and, and uh, the majority here is attempting to uh, herd them all into, their, uh, all into the union in order to maximize uh, output or throughput. I can understand that. I'm curious if the uh, kids in the schools are going to be the next ones to be unionized, Mr. President, but uh, I say that tongue-in-cheek and uh, encourage members to vote no on the bill. Thank you. The Secretary would take the roll on final passage of Senate File 1213 as amended. Mr. President. Senator Fate. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to make one quick remark. Senate File 1213 is a simple yet important fix uh, to close a loophole in our definition of public employee. Uh, this bill allows adjunct faculty and summer faculty who teach at the Minnesota State System uh, to receive the same unit representation as all other uh, faculty. Higher education does not look the same as it once did. Uh, a lot of crucial instruction our students receive happens over the summer or in less traditional settings. The faculty providing this instruction are essential to the success of all students in the Minnesota state system, and we owe it to them to treat them fairly. Uh, this will ensure that all faculty members have the opportunity to receive the same benefits and protections, regardless of the part of the academic year that they teach in. Um, as the chair of higher education, I want to thank Senator Umu Verbaen and the advocates from the IFO and the Minnesota State College faculty for their hard work to move this bill forward, and I encourage all members to vote green. Thank you. The secretary will take the roll on final passage of Senate File 1213 as amended.
Members, please vote. Senator, uh, excuse me, Senator Bowden for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. I report that Senator Dietzik votes aye. Senator Dietzik votes aye. Senator Juzinski, those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Western votes no. Senator Western votes no. Members, please vote. All senators having voted who desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There have been 44 ayes and 20 noes. The bill passed and, the, and its title agreed to. <sighs> Members, we will now go to the 13th order of business. Announcements of Senate interest. Without objection, the following senators will be excused from today's session. Lang, Latz, all day. Farnsworth, 11.30 to the end. Any additional announcements? Senator Jasinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I know it's uh, far in advance, but I want to give people a reminder. Uh, this year's annual I-90 party uh, is being scheduled for Monday, May 1st. Starts at about approximately 4.30 p.m. It's at CHS Field here in St. Paul. Uh, I know we work hard all session long. Uh, sometimes we have disagreements, uh, but this is the one night we can enjoy each other's company uh, and set our differences aside. I hope you, I hope you attend the uh, event. Uh, we'll be having uh, pork producers and Shell's beer, and there'll be all kinds of things. There's a, a $10 donation being asked to, to join the event, uh, but I hope you can all attend. For you new members uh, that are here uh, the first year, it's a very good event, uh, great venue, and uh, it's a, a nice evening, so thank you. Any additional announcements of Senate interest? Any additional announcements of Senate interest? Seeing none, Senator Morrison. Mr. President, I move that the Senate do now adjourn until Monday, April 3rd at 12 noon. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. The Senate is now adjourned. <laughs>